All right, good evening, guys. Ken at Tortoise Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast, Friday night, uh, October 21st, 2022. Uh, I want to start with the sniper trade of the day today. So uh, yesterday we talked about today being another opportunity for a compound critical state to explode. And we identified the metals as a good candidate for that move. Uh, in either direction because it's a compound critical state. So we found the mover today in uh, U.S. Steel. And uh, let's get, get a little markup here. So this was the uh, this was the close. Uh, this is the opening with the PSR flip and a standard wrist box. And off we go. Uh, I get the get a quick quick uh, excursion and a fractional win, a Kata two reentry, I'm able to get my stop to no lose plus dinner for two pretty quick. By this time, locking this in. Now we get the second position in here, and now you can decide. Uh, how you want to manage that trade. How quickly do you want to lock in that second position? Probably by here, and then maybe by here, and then maybe by there. So you have a little stair step in the morning to get this thing well started. And I take my exit in that little region right here. And so if this is, uh, this is about a half an hour, and there's a one wrist box so that gives us one to plus three on the first position plus one on the second position so that's four plus a half here so we're at about 4.5 so far in the first hour uh, because the market is raging up I don't take the short um, we left some on the table there. I took a standard Kata 2 re-entry. And uh, that's, we call that's a Kata 2 because you have a low and a higher low. There's your PSR flip. There's your PSR flip. There's your standard risk box, 15 cents. Uh, it gets interesting if it gets above the R10, RL10, that's really where you can start thinking about adding. Uh, so this region right in here is simply the tactical trade. In the tactical trade, all we're trying to do is figure out how fast we can get our risk out of the market and lock in some fractional gain and make that a no lose plus dinner for two in the same way that we did here. Uh, I don't worry about how much I give back until I can get it locked in and then we'll just see what happens because now it'll be a science project. Right? So with that in mind we see what happens and it's a quick loss as you do. So we're at about um, uh, 3.5 now. Reset to the zero state. Uh, it gives me a Kata 2 re-entry almost immediately. Same price level. So you just line it up and you pull the trigger. There's a low, a higher low, another higher low. It failed to fail. So we just take the re-entry, same standard risk box. It's just about 15 minutes later. This one works. Now here was an opportunity for a second position. Uh, that's our little R10 wiggle, where it starts to roll over but doesn't fail. Instead, it just holds 
and then continues higher that's a new high of the day right there so that's a very good sign uh, there's there's no resistance over here whatsoever we're well above the previous resistance level so the lid to Pandora's box has just opened up but I'm just holding one and I take the standard exit because why not so we just let that thing work take the exit here's one unit of risk that's about one and a half R so 3.5 plus 1.5 we're holding about 5 R right now you can feel it coming caught a two so this is another caught a two Uh, again, you have a low, a higher low, a higher low, another higher low, a PSR flip, a standard risk box, and if it can get above this peak, then it's free and clear. So there's not very much tactical room on this one at all before we're so close to the breakout. Check or hold. It breaks above, so we take the second position. Happy as a dead pig in the sun, and we get a nice orderly exit. So on our first position, we get about one, two and a half. And on the second position, we get about one and a half, so that's another four. So five plus four, we're now holding nine right here. So we're up plus nine. We're noticing it's getting close to the end of the day. Got one more left in us, don't we? Yeah, let's take one more. One unit of risk, one unit of reward, plus one. That gives us 10 for the day in uh, U.S. Steel. The, be the better move was in Freeport Moran. Holy mackerel, was that any good? But all you got to do is find one mover to make a nice day of it. And that was our sniper trade of the day today. Uh, we'll shift now to the market. Uh, here's our 30-minute chart. Here's the, here's the move of the day little gap up and mostly just rocket to the top uh, clearing the two previous peaks coming up and resting right near that five-day high uh, which is also the 10-day high because this is our five-day look back this is our 10-day look back um, and it held right at the 10-day high which is also the five-day high and again look at the size of the five-day range it's as large as the 10-day range minus that little piece. So lots of volatility. Close near the top of the day. Uh, uh, the next upper limit is at 380, which is this support level. So on uh, Monday, that's got to get above here for this momentum to continue. For that five-day momentum, which looks like that, it's got to get above 380 for follow-through. Uh, the news on the uh, declining deficit had to help a little bit there. But all eyes are on the U.K., so the U.S. looks better by comparison. Uh, if we shift now to the daily bars and 30-day uh, look back, you know, here's our, here's our one-day move. Here's our five-day look. Here's our 10-day. Here's our 20, and here's our 30. Here's our 30-day high. Uh, this is our 10-day high. Here's our 10-day low. So this had, generally speaking, some upward 
tendencies. I like the fact that we got a double bottom in and that we broke above this piece. Or even if it's ever so slightly, that's enough. That's enough. And then we can play a tight risk on that uh, on Monday and really power through. Uh, it should be able to get to here. 390 and then 400 next week if this momentum is going to hold and if that support level is going to hold now that it's broken out of this little channel of resistance this is the start of a new regime uh, when we look at the 150 day chart we're looking at groups of 30 there's 30 60 90 120 150 um, this support level turns out to be pretty strong around 360 uh, we're a third of the way back to this intermediate which is at 400 so we managed to just form this like a little W thing right here so it's got to get above 374 to go otherwise we're looking for it to come back and test and if it fails below there look out below but this is the this is another promising chance you know it had the chance here it couldn't it couldn't make the next leg up it failed so it held where it's supposed to hold it's now making this test and now the question is will it or won't it perfectly placed critical state for people to sweat on the weekend okay so uh, we'll take a look at the sectors now let me know in chat if you found that helpful All right, let's uh, let's take a look at the sector performance. Here's the S and P, two point four three. The Qs, the Russell, and the emerging markets all underperforming. Still well in the green, but two point three four, two point one seven, one point five three. Diamonds were better today at 2.5. So it's instructive when the large caps <coughs> are better than the speculative growth opportunities domestically and internationally, right? All right, we're going to take a look at the underperformers. And by the way, that was our, there was our treasuries for the other, um, the other big index. So there's the S and P, our benchmark. Uh, sectors that underperform: Ethereum, oil exploration, the Fangs at 2.24, lumber, and the other lumber at 2.09 and 2.2. Clean energy, the Aussie, Arc Innovation. Staples down to 1.53. Marijuana, Bitcoin, real estate, oil, agriculture, blended commodities, and the VIX all the way down from 1% all the way down to minus 0.4. Um, individual companies that underperform PayPal minus a percent, Squarespace only 1.47. Um, NVIDIA in the semiconductors, 2.23. Um, and other than that, that, it's a pretty good day for individual companies. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at our winners. Again, here's the S&P. So, Mexico, 2.5. Uh, 
Arc Genomics Tech 2.6 and 2.7. Biotech Commercial Real Estate Consumer Discretionary Finance Uranium 3.14. Nice sector performance there. Uh, Lithium 3.2. Materials very strong today off the chart good 3.5 uh, Brazil 3.7 uh, wheat and precious metals the uh, our proxy for precious metals 4.1 and now um, the the winning positions Cliff Alcoa and where's my US deal where are you at boys If it was a snake, it would have bit me. I was looking down below. So there's your there's your movers. There's all your metals. What did we talk about yesterday and the day before? All the metals. So if you pay attention to the market and you pay attention to the relative performance of different sectors and see which ones are in the rise and which ones are falling, then on a day where you see the market going up and materials doing even better, you can find the metals doing best, and then take your pick. You swing a dead cat at the metals, and you are going to make big money today. Find the movers. You must use this lens uh, if you want to find the movers in our strategies. Okay, So that's a necessary skill, the logic chain. So let's take a look at our semiconductors. Now there's Texas Instruments, 3.9. Now there's divergence with these guys, right? Because you have NVIDIA down here underperforming the S&P. But it's 2.23 compared to 3.9. So that's really, I mean, that's not all that bad. And there's Intel at 3.4. So the semis are pretty much better than the S&P, better than tech. Uh, and that's good to go. So uh, to me, the semis and the metals remain key story stocks uh, going into next week. Uh, keep that at the top of your, you know, uh, your momentum board, if you will. Just a quick run through of the regression line fractal framework. So we're looking at the four regression lines. Uh, we're taking a look at the long-term price action there in the 270. That's that pink line. I should have made that pink. What am I doing? So just to reinforce, that's the RL270. The long-term buy and holders. Those guys are not persuaded that we're out of the woods at all. Not at all. The RL90 is this green line. And that's the intermediate buy and holders. There was one effort here to make the cross to the upside when all this started moving, but it couldn't hold. And this movement down made the 90 roll over. So that's like you're a failed uh, 90 to 70 breakout. So the 90 to 70 pair, that's the fast one. That's the slow one. That's a signal that it might be working. When this held support, tried, but failed, this was the key moment of the dragon to the downside, collapsing dragon. So the 270, the 9270 is still uh, persuaded that we're in a bear market. So am I. Uh, the next one is our RL30. And now this is the one that's very important for the owls, right? Because there's some wisdom in this one. Um, this is, look how smooth and orderly the RL30 is at picking out these major swing trends. Uh, if, you, if you watch the 30 and the 90, you get a real sense of where those key turning points are for swing trading. Like this one to the upside, that's the 30, 90, cross to the upside and then that's over when it can't get any higher 
and it fails back to here. That was a really important cluster in here, by the way. If you notice, this is a this is a super pinch because you have this 270, the 90, the 30, and the 10 all in a really tight compression. So after this has moved up and pulled back half, this is the the best possible critical state, the compound critical state that you could ever want. Um, because it's perfectly poised. Like if it moves up, you wouldn't be surprised because the strength of this move. And if it gets above this peak, then that's where you can add a second position. So if you have a long side bias, you believe, yeah, that's the way it's going to go. But there's an equally strong argument for the downside because you have all of these you have all of these moves to the downside to contend with. You know, that's three legs down, one, two, three, and the target is here. So if this critical state doesn't break to the upside, it comes down to here, and now the next leg of the fail is down. But it couldn't get any further than this, and that's what makes this so darn interesting as our next critical state. That's our next compound critical state. Is it going to hold support where it held before? Or is it going to come down and break and then really get large to the downside? Or is this going to recover, get across the 90 through this little ribbon of support up to this critical state? Even if it just does that move, that's a very tradable move. And then the second leg, same size, takes it to here. It's only until it gets up above uh, 430 that this thing is really massively interesting. So we're in a compound critical state right here. And it's easier to see sometimes with the flowing almost hydraulic lines here. Now if we are if we come back and revisit this zero line, we can see that from here to here we went, into the fall and it here into the winter and that corresponds with this move after this long spring and summer where it went from here to here that is a spring and summer move this is a fall move to here and that's winter and now the spring starts right about here so this is the spring is it going to spring up or fall down i don't know uh, critical last time it did this so yes it could do this but it could also do that so we're ready we're ready for big moves in either direction let me know in chat if you found that helpful All right, let's take a look at the boys. Uh, here's Constantine, our prop trader. Looking pretty good. Well, you don't get much more sideways quiet channel than that. He gets a little taste for uh, in here. And then the then it collapses. He gets leg one. It can't break through the dragon. He gets leg two and decides, you know what, that's enough. Uh, 16.5R, anyone? The dollar-Japan pair. And that's not even getting this last leg. So that's 16.5. Good shooting, Tex. Because Constantine specializes in gold and the dollar, he knows that when uh, the dollar Japan pair is selling off, gold is quite often a long trade. Because there was so much volatility, he just took a smaller trade. And so as Japan was collapsing from this point, gold and uh, versus the dollar is rising. He pockets six and four and a half 
So that's 10.5 and 16.527. Not too shabby. Here's his weekly assessment for his uh, prop firm. A 41R week with Friday being a big day. Lower position size because of volatility, but uh, pretty happy with the results. Pure sniper trading. 11 winners, 2 losers, 85% win rate. So he's winning at 0.85. <clears throat> makes a little over 41 for the week. The average performance of the winner is 0.2 is 0.23. The average performance of the 15% that lose was point minus 0 .07, 0.07. So that's a 3 to 1 ratio. So here's a coin flip. If we just rounded that off to 80, it's a four to one coin flip. Four times you win, one time you lose. And when you win, you make three times the size of what you lose. So that's a 12 to one ratio there. Beautiful profit factor. Uh, excellent Sortino and Sharp, Calmar, SQN above four, 18 to one gain to pain. I mean, that's why they're letting him trade with their money. Uh, my brother had the Alcoa portion of this trade. We were talking this morning, finding the movers, and he wanted me to trade Alcoa. I wanted him to trade U.S. Steel, so we just split the difference. Um, he gets the PSAR flip. Standard risk box adds a second position at the two at the two R battle drill, like his home study course teaches. He gets this one, and as it rolls over, he just selects to take six R, and brings home another two point three from Amazon and uh, United Health for eight point three for the day. Here's his Amazon trade. Um, standard uh, RL10 crossing the dragon gets his entry here. Uh, here's the 2R battle drill where he is programming to add a position. Uh, it never gets there. One test comes up and starts to roll over. Take it for an R. Get paid. Bear volatile market. Uh, so that's uh, pretty nice work from the fellas today. I got it say. Good job for the team. All right, we'll shift uh, to the weekend reports now. Starting with our weekly strategy report, which so we take a little step further back and see what's up. Uh, we are mindful that we are in bearish, volatile conditions. The surge of the last couple days takes us back to overbought on the 2 and the 10-day look back, right where it was the last time it collapsed. We're still at 10% exposed in ETF2. Um, we're still holding the key members of the community of practice here. Uh, the risk Z is back to 0.5. This is actually starting to resolve to the upside. So the, that that actually makes the argument for that swing trade back to 400. But that's what it was here also. And then this was a painful sell-off. But the possibility is there. And if it breaks above the zero line, then, uh, you know, we're all in on the long side. go to uh we've already seen those let's go to the the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios 
Latin America and Brazil just dominated this week. It's the only one whose blended numbers are above zero, and it's 13% above zero. Uh, Energy also had a pretty darn good week, while everything else uh, is in cash. But you can see pockets of performance in here. There's your SPY and materials. That's healthy. Industrials and diamonds, that's even healthier. That's the infrastructure guys that's the business cycle of making real things out of metal and wood that's good in the etf 32 portfolio uh, brazil gets added in and you can see that when latin america does good it's not unusual to see brazil do better we made that call earlier this week and have been enjoying that move ever since In the uh, in the Dow, there's uh, energy, uh, pharmaceuticals, finance, and tech. So there's a there's an eclectic mix of things that we're working this week. You know, the fact that you got J.P. Morgan at nine percent and uh, Goldman Sachs at eight percent this week makes me get ready to look for XLF pretty soon the finance so let's see what we can see uh, here's this energy look at Brazil crushing all energy in here there's Latin America Mexico. Looking at the world market model, U.S. mostly above average on the value side. That's your conservative gang. That 44 is, is the Dow. Uh, Latin America, the solid contender there. Energy, the solid sector. And uh, the S&P really kind of outperforming everything except the energy-rich DBC. In the ETF2 model, uh, Brazil right at the top all green all the time there's there's your energies Latin America metals and mining Mexico that's where the strength is fellas don't fight the tape <coughs> and now the um, The ETF liquidity report, the top 30 ETFs by average daily dollar volume over the last 30 days. We're using the ATR percentage to find those tradables. Look at how important tech has become in this world. There was a period of time, you know, about a year ago when the Russell was crushing tech. And now the relative volume is 4 to 1, and it's half of the S&P. That's how aggressive tech is being traded uh, the volatility is still in semiconductors in XBI biotech in uh, oil exploration and in the gold miners these are pretty respectable numbers for tradability too though if I'm being honest very tradable We'll shift to the daily. We'll go to dashboard one. There we go. We've seen that all already. Uh, the um, the Dow 30. Just a handful of OR shorts that say if this this big sell off. 
that has had two bounces and it's resting right at resistance that if this fails uh, then in retrospect we'd call that a dead cat bounce and that we wouldn't be surprised because that's what it did the last time so these little red lights are showing the symbols over here that are the most exaggerated in their bounce off the low and therefore most vulnerable to that kind of sell-off doesn't mean they're going to but when you're in a bearish volatile condition you better pay attention to those signals so that's the alerts on Boeing Cisco Disney Goldman IBM and JP Morgan so just be mindful of those uh, big wins today in Chevron and uh, Caterpillar in the industrials and Merck in the farms and Travelers in finance so a pretty eclectic mix pretty healthy recoveries on the 10 day and one month um, relative strengths that's why I'm I'm a little more optimistic now than I guess I was a while ago I'm still following price that's the most important thing by 95 percent uh, treasure, but I would be lying if I didn't say I didn't detect a, a an improvement in the health. Uh, treasuries continued to suffer, so the yields are good. Uh, Latin America is strong. Brazil and Mexico strong. Dow thirty strong. Energy strong. Crushing it. Tech strong metals and mining strong no surprises there uh, just a handful of auto framers DBC is the most interesting because energy is strong and it yet it still has a three to one so you like to see that more room in energy is what that's saying no squeezes because today was a large range day. And, uh, oops, let me get our little sniper set up here. A couple volatile Godzillas. Only treasuries in the um, tactical set. Plenty of volatile movers. This whole cluster. I even, when you start, you're now starting to see that even the quiet ones are getting some one day big powerful moves. That's how strong the surge today was. And now, if you take that information and you come over to the one day movers, you say, this is sorted by the z-score of the one-day move and these are the ones that were the strongest this one was almost five sigma in his move and this is better than two to one so there was an extraordinary number of symbols that had huge moves today going into a weekend and willing to hold it over the weekend that's a very good sign stats for the auto framer and for the sniper set um, notice that the there has been a healing process in MACD that we're back now into dominated by the spring and the summer. And in this case, it's the ones in summer that are doing the best. Now, that's why you like to look at the market through a variety of lenses. The different disciplines continuing to come up with the same guys. Brazil, Latin America, energy, metals and mining, and Mexico. I'm tracking that the entire way up. Johnson and Johnson, Merck. You have in the energy ExxonMobil, Chevron, industrials. You have Caterpillar, and in finance you have Travelers. So a wide range of strength to benefit from. And the, the tail of the tape, everything is healthy. But the ones that really stand out 
are those symbols that um, that are better than the 10 day, right? So everything was happy today on the 10 day. But where is the residual, the extra strength? Merc, Devon Energy, our boy, Exxon Mobil, and pretty good in J.P. Morgan, Johnson & Johnson. So uh, as you start seeing strength improving going that way, that's where the emerging leaders really are. IBM is not bad. And McDonald's is pretty good. So that's a pretty good sorting mechanism. In the same way down here, you see real strength in energy, no surprise. Brazil and Latin America, and Mexico's not bad. Metals and mining, not bad. That's how you do it. I guess what I like about this one is that after this up, down, up, down, instead of finishing down for the weekend to be down here, it reversed and went up. That's the first sign of like a Kata 2 lazy W that we've seen for a while. That's starting to hook up. That held support at a higher level. And we're not back to the zero line or the long-term average, but that's very healthy in terms of the slope of the RL30. So this is getting pretty good. And we know the risk Z moved up to just minus 0.5. So uh, that's very favorable too. So this, is, this feels positive. This could be like this move here. So we'll be ready. All right, that's everything I got for you today. Uh, we're, looking f we're looking forward to Ken H's work tomorrow night on the swing trades. Uh, those will be interesting. And um, storytelling group in the morning. And uh, creativity group from Europe Sunday morning with the U.S. creativity group Monday night. Uh, those of you that had a chance to witness Jeff Bocasio's beautiful crypto trading program that he briefed to the old graybeards over in London at the Society for Technical Analysis, that's what comes out of the creativity course and a persistent approach and respect for evidence-based research. Um, Trusting our judgment collectively to find good things to do, supported by evidence and not by popular opinion. You have to be able to find an edge, which means that you must look upon the market through your own eyes and your own unique perspective with creativity and courage and collaboration. So let's continue to march, and we'll see you guys later this weekend. Take good care.